Coach Scott. Chad, so Neil just talked about it. Wasn't real pleased with the way the wide receivers and running backs played this past week. So what did you see out of them? What can they do better? Make people miss and break tackles, get yards out of the contact, have some explosive plays on top of it. Those are things we talk about. There's talent equal your production. Those are four ways you produce as a guy with the ball in his hands. You may miss, break tackles, get yards out of contact, or explosive plays. So we got to do a better job of getting yards beyond what the guys are up front block. Can you do that in a week? Absolutely. And we've done it. We've done it. We've done it all the time. They just, you know, they got to do a great job of, you know, it's got to be consistent. We've done it. We've been doing that consistently over the past couple of years. And, you know, we, uh, CJ had a great phenomenal run in the first half where he got 10 yards out of the contact. That's what he's capable of. You got to play that way all the time. Got to be consistent. So it's more about challenging them than it is practicing it. Yeah. 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 Is there a, a sense of pride? In an offense, being able to win these ugly games. I mean, it, it really is, you know, because honestly, in the past, you know, we we've done we've done a good job, you know, uh, sadly of uh, finding a way to not to win those games in the past, right? And and honestly, you know, when we, you know, I was looking at it as if you when the team, good teams come together at times when you get these games like this, they're not always pretty and they're ugly, but you find a way to come out on top. And like I say, in the past, we've done a you know, too good of a job finding ways to not come out on top in those games. So to see the guys rally around and, you know, play good, you know, not necessarily complimentary football, but just be, do a great job backing each other, offense, defense, special teams, and, and to be able to come out with a win was a great thing to see for us. What do you think um, caused CJ and Avery to start a little bit uh, in the second half against Texas Tech? Yeah. He didn't. He didn't. I and mean, he, he's like, he's get out to a good start. That first drive, I think it was the first, second drive. Get out to a good start. You know, he, he's got to keep it going. You know, he's got to keep it going. There's no excuses. He's, he got to keep it going. You know, he got out to a great start. Got to keep it going. I got to do a great job of keeping him going. But, you know, with those guys up front, you know, it's a great offense line up front. You know, it, it all starts with those guys. And the, the, way they, the way those guys are blocking, there's no reason not to be able to go out there and play an elite level all the time. Is that maybe another. A step for him in the process of learning how to be a running back. He's now fighting through that deal of carries uh, accumulating, physical game after yeah. physical game, all that stuff's received. It, it, it really is. It's it's learning. It's, it's learning deal for him. You know, it's uh, you know, it's funny today. Him and uh, DJ Oliver was joking about. He said, "Man, I'm gonna let you. T- hey, when you get a chance, you see what it's like. Take some of them uh, them short yardage plays. But it is accumulation. You know, culmination of, you know, the the, the contact and the consistent hits. You know what I mean and and so that's something he got to do a great job taking care of his body throughout the week. And and also, you know, he's got to do a great job. The other guys got to do a great job, too, when they're in the game. You know, we rotate a couple guys in there. They got to do a great job of, you know, being productive and taking care of each other. So, you know, one guy doesn't have to carry, the, you know, the load consistently. How do you think Nico handled being the guy? Yeah. I thought he handled it really well. You know, uh, he, I'm pretty sure he'll tell you he didn't have his best day. Uh, but he found a way to win, you know. You know, and that's all that matters. You know, you find a way you, you learn from it. You know, it's, it's lesson to be learned. And, you know, the best thing about it, you know, I talked about Friday, those guys having a win the next play mentality. So that means, you know, whatever happened the previous play, you got to let it go. And then we got to play the next play. And regardless of the outcome of the previous play, you know, whether it was good or bad for him, I thought he came out the next play and had a, you know, clear mindset and, and went out and had to win the next play mentality. And so I thought he did a good job of, you know, in the end, you know, you know helping us win that ball game. Has he got enough of a sample size with the, the playing the vast majority of the pit game and then winning the Texas Tech game where you start to feel more comfortable, give him a little bit more than just, okay, manage things, mm-hmm. rely on the guys around you? Is he getting to that point? He is because, you know, we went into the game plan. I said this to you guys last week. The, the previous two times where he played a significant amount of time were both times where he had no idea it was going to happen with Garrett injury in the uh, last game of the year last year. And, and uh, the other game the other day. But this was the first time where he had an entire week to prepare for it. He knew he was going to start. He knew he was going to be the guy. I thought he handled it really well. But then it was the times in games where guys didn't make plays for him. You know, we didn't make plays at the running back spot for him. We didn't make plays at the receiver spot for him. And, you know, and they guys responded, and they did really well. And the times we got behind the chains or, you know, we didn't execute as well. And and then we kind of had to stray off game plan a little bit and, you know, do some things that can allow us to get a, you know, favorable down situation or, or get the first down and he didn't fret man he handled it really well and, and went out there and made plays and I thought at times he did a, overall he did a good job making good decisions where he pulled the ball down and ran extended the play and gave us another opportunity to snap the ball again Cole's got a touchdown in the red zone two weeks in a row yep. one of the tight ends mentioned the 
Red Zone success. Huge, man. Huge. Listen, any kind of success those guys can have downfield in the red zone, any kind of success the, uh, the receivers can have, it, it allows our offense to be able to open up and, and for you guys to be able to see exactly what it is we got, you know. So that's why we need, uh, you know, having Cole down there as a big red zone threat. We can clear the box. Right now those box numbers are heavy in the run game. And so uh, having that kind of red, that, that kind of threat, that kind of option, man, it kind of allows defenses to force the defenses to play us honest and not stack the box and just stop the run game. You guys would like more explosive plays. No question. How much can you scheme that, or how much is that just player organically driven? It's both. It's both. And you, you can scheme it. But even when you scheme it, right, you know, even when you scheme it, in those one-on-one situations, guys got to make those plays. You know what I mean? You're not going to necessarily – even when you scheme plays, you know, you're not just going to have guys just running scot-free unless they blow a coverage. And at times you try to, you know, confuse them a little bit where you can get a blown coverage possibly, you know, uh, even on the, on the cold touchdown, it wasn't necessarily just a – we knew with that particular – that concept and to the boundary we ran, it would be a mix-up in coverage, which is why he was wide open. So you can get some of those at times where you can try to cause some coverage confusion where you get guys scot free. But otherwise, you call plays and where you know you're getting that you're a player one-on-one, you know, a, ma- a mismatch, and they got to capitalize on that opportunity to make the play. And, you know, Nico made some uh, – he made some good throws for some, for some guys the other day, and they didn't make those catches for him. And it was time where the backs were in one-on-one situation. We need those guys to be able to make a play, make that guy miss and go hit the big one. But we definitely got to be more explosive. Is it a matter of getting the right guy uh, in that because there were a couple screen passes Both. that were blocked that were Exactly, there. exactly right. Both. And we talk about that. Talked about that again today. And that, that's the thing we've been discussing uh, since spring football. I've always discussed with the running backs. It does your talent equal your production. Uh, you know, and we tell you, again, we explain what a production is. You know, make a miss, break tackle, you always have the contact with explosive play. But you're absolutely right. It's by getting the, the right guys in the situations to be able to make those plays. How important, how important was it to get a kid like Rodney Gallagher a positive play uh, to help to help him feel like he's part of it? That was huge. That was huge. And it was a heck of a play, too. It was a really heck of a play. And that's what I'm talking about, right? So that was a play where, you know, first of all, you know, it was a scheme play for him, right? You know, one you hope to be an explosive play. And on first contact, it was not an explosive play. He got stuffed by the safety maybe five, six yards, right? But then you put the ball in the hands of a player, and all of a sudden that player makes a play. He turned that play into an explosive. So that was a play called that was skiing to hopefully, you know, trick the defense, get him to go to one side of the field, and we reverse and catch him off guard. But, and it did for some and didn't, and didn't do it for a lot of other ones. But – he made a play and turned to an explosive play. So you're exactly right. Uh, that was, did a lot for his confidence. He was excited and increased some more opportunities for himself too. Chad, uh, he also did team with a lot of talent just didn't practice very well last week. He didn't, and then he was he had some uh, some minimal mistakes toward the end of the week uh, last week. That you know sometimes just you know when you get so close to the game, you know, in fact he had one on Saturday morning another walk through. It just kind of sometimes make you nervous. Is he is he focused? Is he ready? Is you know is his mental's all there? What not and and so, but we're gonna be a lot more attention. I'm gonna be a lot more attention. I told him uh, this week on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, he got to come see me every day for open hours. We're gonna make sure he understand the game plan because what I want to do, I want to get him in the game beyond just touches. I just want to get him in the game and let him play ball, where he knows the protection and understands what he's looking at, and he he can pick it up. Just more so, just understanding what he's looking at and having the uh, confidence to go out there and do it. So. He's going to come see me more this week outside of required time, so we can just put him out there and let him play ball because he's, he's gifted with the ball in his hand just like Rodney. On that same note, Coach mentioned that Devin Carter had his grandma pass away recently yeah, and that tough. might have affected how he played because it was an off day for him. Mm-hmm. How do you as a coach figure out a way to obviously respect a kid going through something but make sure that his head is still in it because you do still need him on the field? Like, yeah, we just got to be there for him like we were. We were there for him in every way. Myself, Coach Brown, everybody on the offense, Coach Coach Marshall, we just got to be there for him. That, that that stuff happens at time. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that's tough. I mean, it, it, you know, we got. I think it got to him a little bit. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that, and he was uh he was emotional on the sideline, and I think Coach uh, Coach Marshall took him out at that particular time where he was he got emotional about it. So he did it, he did the right thing, getting him out of there. I ask you um. Are you aware that you've won five of your last seven games going back to last year? I'm not aware of that. I am now. So five of the last seven. Five of the last seven. <clears throat> your your starting center wasn't aware of that. Um, I think that's kind of slipped by. And 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 you beat Oklahoma during that stretch. You yeah. beat Oklahoma State during that stretch. Mm-hmm. You played Penn State. 
So there is a, you're not like playing a bunch of a soft teams. No, we're not. And I can tell you, and probably because we don't remember that, we'll talk about man, playing the next game. The most important game is the one that's ahead of us. And, uh, and that's probably why we don't remember. We do remember that we taking care of these three home games at home and got three tough, really good wins for us that, you know, put us in a good position moving forward. Much demonstrating that this team is – beginning to gel a little bit yeah. and beginning to get a little more confident. Do you, mm-hmm. you sense that? I do sense that. And I tell you, man, it always starts with those guys up front. I told them, I spoke on the whole offense today. Uh, I'm pretty sure Coach Brown spoke on you guys about, you know, you got Zach Frazier won the offensive lineman of the week and Wyatt Milo for the first time since I've been here. Might be the one of the first time anywhere I've coached where an offensive lineman won the offensive player of the week. I mean, that's big time. And I told the whole offense that. So those guys, but they press in the lead level all the time. And so it, a consistent challenge, a constant challenge to all the guys, uh, you know, receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, to practice and play at the level that those guys do it. I know he's a baseball player, but when did you realize that Traylon Ray could pass? And do you – is it tough to – are you worried when you ask a f- true freshman to make that play? Not at all, man. And that's – you know, that's the thing that, you know, myself and a lot of us coach got to do a great job. Them guys talent. We recruited them for a reason, man. So, you know, you got to, you know, like I said, spend a lot more time with them outside of required time to make sure they're comfortable with the tough things. We know if you throw the ball to him, he can catch it and do something with it. You hand it to him, he can run it and do something with it. It's the things like the blocking and then that kind of stuff. But we knew that back in fall camp. We asked all the guys, if you feel like you can throw, you think you can throw, Stay behind practice and uh, throw the ball. And <laughs> crazy enough, the two talent, the most probably the two most talented guys throwing the football is was trailing, being one, and Jaheen White. He's southpaw. He left-handed guy. But uh, so we knew then, and we've been working on that play. Uh, called it Denver because Cole's from Colorado. Glad it worked out. I hate that happened to him. How he got tackled and whatnot. But but we knew back in fall camp. If it had been a helicopter coming out there, that would have been it, though, right? Oh, no, man, no doubt. I'm glad that didn't happen. <laughs> find a few guys that just can't throw it all. Sometimes that happens in the games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, anything else for Coach Scott? Thanks. All right. Thank, Thank you, you all. Much.